Howdy, welcome to the channel today. I'm Luke, Thunderhead 289 here on YouTube. And you might wonder why I'm walking along the side of the road here today. Well, I managed to break the Maverick. All right, so just up this road a piece is where I set things in motion that just about sent the Maverick to the divine beyond. You'll see as we come around the corner, there's a line on the ground and it's actually engine oil. And uh, I traced the line all the way back to see where this began, and it is right on this road. So when I flogged it, I blew my oil pressure line. Now lucky for me, I'm pretty darn nutty, and I check my cars over after I get out of them all the time. You know, I'm no stranger to the fact that I drive 50-year-old cars, so it's always worth a look. And uh, anyway, I could kind of see this line that looked like it was fairly fresh and leading up to my car. So after I got done with the gym here, I came out and sure enough, I opened the hood, started the engine and it shot oil out everywhere. All right, so the Maverick is in the middle of what I would call the shakedown period, which is basically when I get an old car and kind of get it back on the road. Now, of course you do all the normal things, brakes, um, everything that just stands out, wheel bearings and all of that stuff, of course. Um, but since I drive this stuff every day, I need it to be fairly reliable. So, a big old crop duster just went over. So what I do with these old cars when I first get them on the road and get them going, you know, little things will pop up. You know, you need to remember you're still driving a 50-year-old car or something. So, you know, what I do is I keep them around town, drive them around town. I don't go anywhere where... You know, I have to be somewhere on a, at a specific time or anything like that. Or if I do, I leave myself a lot of leadway. All right, so here's the little 302 that's pretty much death warmed over, but someone put an Edelbrock top end kit on it, didn't know what they were doing. And anyway, um, lo and behold, I came to own this car. But that's a story for a different day. Looking down here, um, it originally, before I even got it, had this copper brass line or whatever to the oil pressure sender. It's got a mechanical gauge in the cab there and basically what i don't like about these especially on a ford when the engine revs it tilts a little bit and this thing even has um fairly solid mounts but it still is just enough where even if you leave and there's a lot of play here you know even if you leave enough room it'll eventually fatigue on a ford at least and snap now i've ran one of these on my 74 f100 for like 12 years and they've done just fine. Now, the only thing I would say is, you know, it, it helps to probably keep them out of the UV, but on an old Fox body I had, I had one running right on the dash for two years and it never turned yellow and never had any issues whatsoever. So, and they're a lot more flexible and you won't have things like this happen. But, you know, I know what you're thinking. You want to see me start this up and spew everywhere. I can definitely do that for you. So anyway, let's see if she just bumps over. Might want to put it in neutral. Holy crap, the 80s music. All right, here we go. Oh, she's nice and cold now. Let's give her one, two blips, and we should be good. All right, so here we go. There she goes. You can see the oil spraying out. So, uh, yeah, not good. That would not obviously take very long and you would not have any oil left in your engine. So, not today, Satan. I didn't drive too far with that going on. So when I pulled the dipstick, it almost had, you know, I've lost maybe half a quart, but just between that road and here, you know, half a quart, that's pretty fast. All right, there we go. She's temporarily fixed until I can switch that line over. But as you can see, when you rev the engine, it wants to buck that way. And just over time, even though there's plenty of material there to allow some flex, it's still gonna try and move the most right at the fitting. And over time, it just fatigues and it snaps. That's been my experience with these. and. You can see it's a short trip there and you can very easily ruin an engine. I got lucky today. All right guys, well that's gonna do it for me. I appreciate you coming along today for my uh, my little extra bit of exercise I didn't plan on having. Um, 
So the takeaway here is, you know, I've, I've just never had a lot of good luck with those copper lines. If you have, great. Um, that's just my personal experience. These poly lines, although they seem extremely flimsy, you know, they seem to do the job. Just the copper lines on, on a Ford where they come into the side, it seems like even if I give them a lot of play, you know, when that, when that engine bucks all sideways and everything, it just seems like it wants to kink right at the, uh, um, or stress fracture or whatever, right at the fitting. And then you have what we saw here in this car today. So this was just already in here and I left it, but um, this isn't the first time I've seen this. So that's takeaway there. Also, this is a very good example of why I take cars like this Maverick that I just got on the road and everything. Of course, you do all the general maintenance, but the shakedown is very important. And I have some pretty specific rules, I guess, you know, to a degree. I always keep them in town um, for the first few thousand miles and I don't, drive them to anywhere where I have to be somewhere on time you know I kind of expect them to break down I drive around with a lot of tools um, you know and then usually whatever's gonna fail pretty quick fails in the first couple thousand miles um, and once you fix that stuff you're you're pretty much good to go for a long time after that so I'm the one stupid youtuber that drives this stuff every day but folks always ask why I know so much about this stuff and it is because I drive it every day and I've encountered a lot of failures and you know if nothing else our failures teach us you know what we need to do moving forward to not fail in the future I guess and that's what I try and bring to you guys on this YouTube channel of mine so with that um, I'm gonna keep working on the Maverick here I got a few things yet to do uh, to get it all ironed out I'm sure you'll see it on the channel here eventually but yeah it seems like it's good to go I appreciate you coming along and uh, see you next time Oh, look at, look at that. The disappearing seat 1000. It's nice. Quality nice automobile quality. there. Quality vehicle. How are you doing that? Sitting on a dead raccoon at the moment. I have to shift this under my leg. That's how what? I'm, that's how I'm driving this car. Look, this, this is literally how I'm shifting the car. <laughs> under the leg. If anyone else bought this car, it would never come back to life. Yeah. And I don't even know if I want to, but we'll see. Like, wow. Well, I guess I'm going to die. Is, I'm literally going to die in a four-door Maverick today. You were like, why isn't he using his turn signals? I'm like, dude, I'm not letting go of this steering wheel with for one second. Uh, Watch this door open. I, I went. <laughs> Did you just pull the handle? I just pressed the button and it opened. Oh, well, good. Whatever. I'm just glad I can get out of it. Oh, land. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, all joking aside, that was, that was frightening. I bet.